Law Warrior Armor Double Feature Poe Heavy Tank Overview The end of the Fourth Succession War devastated the Capellan Confederation. Having lost more than half of its star systems and most of its industrial base, the Capella military were left desperate for new war materiel to rebuild the conventional forces. The young Chancellor, Romano Lau, recognised her realm's plight and quickly commissioned Ivan Maladev, a up-and-coming military weapons designer and student of 20th century Russian history, to address the crisis. The Capella military needed weapons and fast, but because Romano's sister Candace took a sizable portion of both state and family funds when she defected to the Federated Commonwealth, the new weapons also needed to be inexpensive. Taking a page from Russian history, Maladev designed a tank that packed a hefty punch and was built using sturdy, economical parts. The most important design specification, however, was that all the components for the new tank were manufactured in what remained of the Confederation. The military approved the tank and rushed the design from the drawing board to full-scale production in a record 14 months. Chancellor Lau named the new tank the Po for the mischievous and vengeful spirit of Chinese tradition, and used her new units to brutally and brilliantly fend off an invasion mounted jointly by the Duchy of Andurian and the Magistrati of Canopus. Capabilities the Po is built around the rugged and dependable Ceres 240 internal combustion engine, which gives the tank a maximum speed of 65 kph. Simply constructed with reliable components, the Po offers easy maintenance in the field. It makes its main punch with the Ceres R Model T Class 10 autocannon, a weapon with an excellent combat record. The Model T makes the Po a serious combat threat to light and medium mechs. Two Maxi Mini machine guns, one turret mounted alongside the autocannon and the other mounted in a ball joint on the front of the Poe, constitute the tank's secondary weapons. Ten and a half ton of armour provide respectable protection for the vehicle along with its ease of maintenance and decent firepower. This protection makes the Poe a popular, poor man's version of the Rommel or Patton tank. Despite the jokes deriding the Poe as a wannabe of better known units, it has become the principal combat vehicle of Compellan Worlds, lacking any mech units. Deployment. Since 3038, Ceres has sold the Poe to mercenary and house units throughout the Inner Sphere, in an ongoing attempt to bolster its now depleted army units, and House Marrick continues to purchase the lion's share of these as they roll off the production lines. The tank's brisk sales have kept badly needed sea bills pouring in to the Capellan treasury. 3058 Upgrade Overview after the end of the Full Succession War, which devastated the Capellan Confederation's military production, then-Chancellor Romano Lau commissioned Ivan Maladev to design an easy-to-maintain and low-budget tank to quickly replenish the devastated CCAF. Rushed straight into full-scale production, the Po saw immediate action in the defence of the Confederation against the Andurians and Magistrasi forces. Because of its sturdy construction and easy maintenance schedule, the Poe continues to see solid use amongst the Confederation Reserve Cavalry, and is even practically given to the Capellan Defence Force by Ceres Metal in an ongoing effort to compete with Hildco and Hellspont. Consequently, the majority of planetary militias along the Magistrasi and Capellan March borders are heavily supplied with the Poe. Capabilities Built around the dependable and cheap Ceres 240 internal combustion engine, the Poe offers easy maintenance, even in the field. The main gun, the venerable Ceres R Model T Class 10 autocannon, is supplied with enough ammo to last several minutes of heavy combat, and two Maxi Mini machine guns provide close support to ward off infantry teams. Deployment Because of its low cost and easy maintenance, the Poe is a popular choice amongst most mercenary units across the Inner Sphere, helping bring money into the Confederation's treasury. Over the last decade, House Marrick have purchased large numbers of these supposedly to bolster their depleted army units within the League. Recent events occurring within the region, however, have begun to reveal the truth, as according to a source that Mask had planted deep within Ceres Metals, over half of the purchase units actually went to the Word of Blake and their units stationed within the League. The cost of these units was charged to various blind accounts within various Free Worlds League military budgets, and so when the intended recipients notified their quartermasters of the missing units, they were only re-requisitioned, and the process would start over. Only the destinations would now change. Enough materiel would arrive to stem off any heavy investigation, and the entire operation continued well after the beginning of the Jihad, until the Ceres vice president approached the Maskirovka with a guilty conscience. 
production and shipment of the PO to any Free Worlds League unit ceased immediately, and the overuse of material was redistributed to the CCAF at no cost to the Capella military. Variants Early on, the Free Worlds League experimented with their new light gauss rifle mounted to the PO with limited success. The light gauss didn't pack the punch of the venerable Model T autocannon, but it did have the reach to provide long-range support. Effective only in lance-sized units, the light gauss variant never became popular with tankers, and was discontinued by 3064. In 3069, Ceres would experiment with an LB variant, mounting an Orienta Model 0 Class 10 in place of the standard autocannon. Using the extra space to add another ammunition bin, the LB-10 variant can maintain a longer period of fire, and was immediately produced in large quantities for use in the CCAF's Shadow Lancers. This new variant of the Poe found high acclaim amongst the hard-hit troops along the Capella March border, shoring up the reserves and releasing the more mobile units for use against Duke Hassock in his personal crusade against the Confederation. Notable crews Gearhead Brigade Comprising a company of Poe tanks and supported by an infantry regiment, this arm of the Drozen military militia has accounted for six mech kills over the last five years while dealing with increased bandit activity. Rumour abounds among the members of the unit that they will soon be attached to a CCAF unit in the Victoria Commonality to bolster Confederation troops from the brutal attacks of the Federated Sons. Miracle Martha. Named after its first commander, this Poe was the seventh to roll off the original assembly line on Menka. Despite incredible odds, the tank has survived several brutal firefights and has even been assigned to four different CCAF units. Miraculously, the Miracle survived the orbital bombardment of Forbidden City and was among the first vehicles to assist in rescue and recovery operations, with the crew mounting a makeshift towing crane along the barrel of their auto cannon. They're credited with the rescue of uh, Sang Jiang Jun, uh, Talon Jan from the wreckage of the palace, and the vehicle served briefly as his command centre until more appropriate accommodation could be found. The Chancellor, upon his return, awarded the entire crew with citizenship on Zahn's recommendation. But what does all of this translate into? Well, it's another 60-ton vehicle, same as the Manticore. It's a tracked-type vehicle with an ICE Series 240 power plant, so it gives it the exact same move of 43 and 65 kph. Its armour is a Star Shield Type 5. The armament is a Series Arms Model T Class 10 also cannon with two maxi mini machine guns. It's manufactured by Series Metals Industries, and it's primarily pr produced on Menka and St. Ives. Its communication system is the Series Com Model 37P, and its targeting and tracking is the Series Slash Maladev Mark III. All of this translates then into a 4 and 6 cruise and flank speed respectively, with armour of 40 on the front, 32 on the sides, 30 on the rear, and 34 on the turret, as the single AC-10 mounted in the turret with 20 rounds of ammunition, and the twin machine guns, one next to the gun and one in the body, with a split 200 rounds between them. Pretty simple, no fuss, great looking tank, and uh, yeah, can't really go wrong. Not too, too much of a fan of the artwork of this one because it, it's that weird higher angle looking at the kind of rear back right hand side of the vehicle. Not quite sure why. Would love to have seen something a bit more dynamic uh, from it positioning wise, but whatever. It's, it's, it's got this like rounded turrets and these big, you know, big tracks and the stuff. It, it looks very, it's plain, like, you know, it's compared to things like the Manticore and the Bulldog and all that. It's a fairly basic looking vehicle, but that is exactly the point, and it's great. It's also uniquely Capellan, which means it can factor into any kind of scenario or um, a tabletop game you might be running in that area of space. You know it's going to be something after the full succession was going to be quite common. It's going to be seen regularly. It's got a decent punch to it, half decent range with the AC-10, and it can take several hits before the crew start to sweat. And it's yeah, just a, a like just the common vehicle. It's the it's the T-34 of the you know of the Capellan line. Uh, I'm sure actually it's probably not supposed to be called Po. It's probably supposed to have a bit more of a kind of can't say like Po kind of sound to it uh, with the name. Um, if if anyone is. A bit more au fait with uh, with Chinese uh, sort of uh, mythos and uh, and the pantheon of gods and demigods and the such. I'm sure there's someone who'd say it'd be like Po. Uh, it's like it's like when anyone who's played Dynasty Warriors, they've always heard Lu Bu, but apparently it's Luobo, for instance. So, yeah, it's like the the interesting 
sounding of the word. But uh, for now, we'll just refer to it as the Po. It's it's the red Teletubby, uh, which, it, to be honest, it probably just makes it all the more frightening that uh, something that you know would be coming over the over the hill with that soundtrack playing in the background as it's firing AC-10 rounds at you is quite frightening. Uh, the sort of a scenario there. Um, bright red painted, uh, just you know, going again, again as it's firing the AC-10 at you. That's yeah, a, it's a terrifying idea. But, uh, yeah, I personally like the Light Gauss version. I like the idea of that. It's Again, it's something that you can have on the table to harass the players. It gives them pause for thought, may, or it should do anyway, that, yes, it is only hitting you with eight points per turn because it's a Light Gauss rifle, but it's got the range, and it can sit back there. And you've got to try and do something about it, because it only, you only need that one roll to get that crit, and that could cr cripple one of your vehicles or one of your mechs. So, you know, it suddenly turns it into a much more dangerous piece of equipment, I personally feel, than the AC-10. Because you're only sacrificing two points of damage per shot, but you get such a range increase from the AC-10's range to a light Gauss range. You know, you're going up into, like, 20-odd hexes. Um... I think that's more than adequate as a as a as a, a sacrifice of two points of damage per turn when it can sit that far back. And you can imagine if you had that thing being supported uh, by spotters or or anything, you know, any kind of um, like if I had a if you had a custom version with like a, a C3 slave and then you had a master unit up ahead, oh, that'd be brutal. But we shall leave it there with the power. It's a good tank. I like it, and uh, I, just, uh, I, I assume I, I, I think this one's going to be mixed. I think I think uh, people in the comments are going to be kind of some are going to be in favour of it. I think some of them are going to see it as not being as viable as other units. But I, I think with its background and its reason for existing, I think there's 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 enough there that makes it it stands out. I I like it for that reason. But yeah, have a good one all. Thanks for listening, and I'll uh, I'll speak to you next time. Bye bye.